So we've got Hermann joining us and uh, Debbie's joined us, Brian's joined us, John Marie's joined us. Great to have you all here. So we've got Jenny that'll be talking to us about LinkedIn and how we can generate leads. So really, really excited. We've just got about one minute to go and then we will kick off just waiting for some more people to attend. So also just so you guys know, we're, I'm running <clears throat> two screens. So I've got the chat box and I've got the participants open on, on a second screen and the presentation. Yeah, so if I'm not looking at you, it's um, not being rude. I'm just checking what's going on on the other screen. So let's give it one, <clears throat> one more minute and then we will start. Hi, Armand. Great, great to see you. Yeah, and I understand you have a meeting at 11. So I am recording this session. So I will share it with those who, who would like um, the recording after the session as well. So if we do drop off or we have some network challenges. And yeah, I think uh, let's, let's kick off. So great to have you all here today. Um, beautiful, beautiful day by me. And yeah, we got some more people in. I'm just letting them in. So really excited today. So today we're going to be talking about the five ways, five ways to generate more business, get more leads, get more customers, generate more profit. And then we're going to be talking about LinkedIn is how you can use LinkedIn in conjunction with the five ways to really drive your, your business forward. So I'm just going to get off and uh, start going and just firstly start off by telling you a little bit about myself and, and a little bit about action coach so i i'm peter the longer i've been sure i've been in business for well over 30 years I, I started my career out in in the automation industry working in the fast moving consumable goods i was there for about nine years i worked for for unilever for many many years and i've been in the manufacturing sector for for well over 21 years I did some work for Powertech where I did sales and marketing for Powertech, specifically in, in the industrial sector and, and the automation sector. And I, I went to work for, for GE. I, I ran sales and marketing for their automation system and then eventually became general manager for, for General Electric, the electrical division out in Madrid. After that, I, I went and I bought a, a steel company called Tipro Electrical, which is based in Isando. And I owned that company for, for about 11 years, employed 32 staff, who were turning about you know, 20, you know, 30, you know, 16 million rand a year. Guys, we just had do uh, network speed is up and down because of Eskim. So if I do fade out, I, I will come back in. And yeah, about five years ago, I got involved in Action Coach and, and I found that Action Coach had such a tremendous amount of value to offer businesses, business owners, CEOs and directors um, about how to grow your business, how to keep your business going forward because we're all experts in our field. We all love doing what, what we're doing. And uh, Jenny says, my screen is blurred. I, I'm not too sure. Is it coming right now? Yes, it's coming right. So yeah, the speed network speed goes up and down. I just want to make sure my phone is off the network. So yeah, we, we, we just spend a, a tremendous amount of time doing the work. We love doing the work. But when it comes to sales and marketing systems, finance, and really running the business and growing the business, we end up having to learn the hard way. And, and I found with the Action Coach system, it's, it's really great because it's fast tracks your learning so that you can really drive your business and get your business to the point where it provides you, you with a lifestyle you deserve. So I've got 
two children. Uh, Michael, my son, is, is 22. He's in Stellenbosch University. He's in final year studying mechatronics engineering. And, and I've got a, my daughter, Genevieve. Um, she's got three beautiful children. We've, we've got Harland and, and she's just re six months ago, she's had twins. So really, really exciting. We've got my wife there, her name is Cheryl and, and my mother-in-law. So my, my mission in life is to impact the lives of, of 10,000 business owners, business leaders who, who are awake at two o'clock in the morning searching for a solution to their business. And, and that is so, so important to understand. I don't know of any business leader who hasn't been on the couch two o'clock in the morning, worrying about people, worrying about a staff member, worrying about cash flow, worrying about sales, worrying about production. Um, and what do, what do we do to, to get out of that so that you can really have a great quality of life within your business? So Action Coach is a worldwide organization. We're based out in the US. Uh, we've got about a thousand coaches through, throughout out the world in more than uh, 80 countries. And in our vision is to create world abundance through business education. And, and we coach on average about 15,000 businesses a week across the US, Australia, New Zealand, right through to South Africa, Vietnam. We've got coaches in Namibia and Botswana now as well. So it's, it's really, really a powerful system and, and a great um, organization to be part of. So th these are some of my clients who are still with me and past clients that have really, really have achieved great results in, in their business um, from trailer manufacturers to, to food and beverage manufacturers through to solar and energy and power. And over the COVID times, some of these clients have really, really grown their business, some of them up to 120% in a 12 month period since they've been starting working with me. And the question is, how do they do that? You know, and, and pretty much I, I run three, three programs. And one is what we call the action club, which is a 12 month education and, and group coaching program. We have a mentor club, which is also face to face every, every fortnight group coaching session. And then we do one to one coaching where, where I sit with the individuals once a month, twice a month, four times a month. And I coach you around your business about driving growth, improving cash flow, getting the right people. So my purpose today is, is to really reward your time to find some fast and easy ways to increase your sales and profits, get more customers now and, and achieve your goals. And I really want to challenge the, the way you are thinking at the moment. And, and that, is, that, is that is really, really important because a lot of times our thinking is what holds us back and, and our belief system is what holds us back. So these are, this is the most, two most expensive words in, in the business language. And this is the words that we say, I know. I know how, what I'm doing. I know what to do. I know, I know. And it always reminds me of my teenage children, you know, yes, dad, I know, mom, dad, I know. And when you, when you think about that and they say to you, I know, your children say to you, I know, what, what does that actually mean? It means that they're not open to learning. They're not open to new ideas because they know. And, and this is, this is really expensive in, in business. And and what I want to do here today is just remove the I know factor and replace it with isn't that interesting. Because when we remove the I know factor, it allows us to think about what was said, go away, and then come back and have an educated discussion about it. Rather than just clearing it off and, and saying, no, no, not, not right now, not interested, not open to the ideas. Because we constantly need to have open minds when we want to drive your business forward and keep growing. So this brings me to the next slide, which, which is a very, very powerful slide. And, and this is what we call point of power. And where are you, your business, yourself, your team operating? When, when a person operates below the point of power, this is where we have blame, excuse, and denial. It's not my fault. It's COVID. It's, it was one of my staff members or someone else, or it was the customer. 
blame, excuse, and denial. That this gives us permission not to do what's needed. And, and even in, in, in business and marketing, and I've seen so often with, with marketing where people go to blame, excuse, and denial, where they try something and then they say it didn't work because of blame, excuse, and denial. And what we want to do is we want you to be operating above the point of power. And this is where you need to take account ownership. You need to be accountable and you need to be responsible because when you're operating below the point of power, or someone's drawing on my screen. So when you're operating below the point of power, you need to understand that it, it makes you powerless. You don't do what's needed to be done to move your business forward or to do the marketing because you've maybe got a belief system that says it doesn't work or um, I've tried it, but I haven't had consistency in it, so it doesn't work. And you want to be operating above the point of power where you have ownership, you are accountable and you are responsible because that is when you can take control of, of your situation. So when, when we look at, at participation, and I just want to see here if I, if I can remove, um, I can't remove this line that was put on here. Yeah. So when, when we look at participation, the only failure here today is, is not to participate. It's extremely important to participate today, be involved. We're going to run some polls, take take charge of the polls, put some comments in, in the chat box, because this is when we really learn is when we participate. And it's all about learning. So, so you must be willing to have some fun today as well. And also in your business, we, we spend so much time driving, driving for the results, working towards the business that we forget to celebrate the successes. We forget to have the fun. And it's important that you really do have fun within your business. Something that you can expect from today is what we call beer fuzz. These are blinding flashes of the obvious. These are things that you know. You just know what you have to do. It makes sense. It was mentioned, yeah, it's something you knew you've had to do in the past, but you haven't done it. So you don't need to analyze it any further. You just need to get up and go and do it. And, and that is extremely important. So the question that I would so today I want to ask you a couple of questions, and, and this is where we're going to launch our first poll, is how long have you been in business? How many people do you currently employ? And, and what is your expected turnover for 2021, 2022? So it's just a great, great question. So I can get a sense of, of where everyone is. I'm just going to launch the first poll. All right, so the, the poll should be coming up on your side now. So if you can just uh, take part, how long have you been in business? So ha has your business been running for zero to one years, one to three years, four to eight, nine to 20 years, more than 20 years? How many people do you, do you employ? Do you employ one to five, six to 10? Is it, is it, just less than 50, more than 50. And, and from what I can see here, we've got really, really a great mix of people. And what is your expected turnover for this financial year? And I think that that's important because you know how many businesses I speak to and they actually don't know. They, they actually don't know their financial numbers. And, and that is so important that, that you know your numbers. And I see we've got really, really a great mix of people. So we've got companies that have been with us for, been around for more than 20 years. Um, we've got some new guys who've been around for so zero to one years, one to three years. And so we've got a really a nice fix, a large majority been around for 19 to 20 years. So that's really nice. Employees, I see quite a lot of people employing one to five, and then we've got six to 10, which is a nine. We've got a couple that are doing sort of 11 to 50 and, and 50, more than 50 employees. And then we've also got a nice mix of, of businesses around you generating from 2 million rand a year all the way up to, to 50 million rand a year. So I'm going to end the poll now. So so really, uh, thank you for taking part. It's just great to get a sense and a position of where everyone is right now.
<clears throat> so let's get started so firstly i want to get your permission to be your coach for the next 90 minutes educate you have some fun in the process and and really take action because at the end of the day you know what you can come here and you can learn and you can attend all these webinars but unless you're going to take action and you're going to apply what you learn here today you're pretty much wasting your time and what I would like to teach you quickly is, is a little bit about learning. And this is so important about how you're going to take notes and what you're going to do right now. So when we have left and right brain, we have a left brain, which is words, maths, logic, process, details. These are engineers, accountants, auditors, architects, guys who, who like to operate in, in a straight line and square boxes environment. And then you get the right brain thinkers who are the artistic type, the music, the creators, they, they're feeling, they, they look at the bigger picture. Um, and and I'm, I'm very privileged. My son is left brain. My, my daughter is right brain. And, and it's, it's quite interesting to see how the artistic people react to deadlines and processes and systems versus, versus the left brain who love processes and systems and deadlines. The problem is we want these two brains to work together. And when they're not working together, it creates confusion. And, and that, is, that is important to understand is, is we don't want to create that confusion. And the way we do that is by getting them to work together is to, is to just remember that using colors is so important. So when, when you're making notes today, write down, use colors, because it triggers the, 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 the right side of the brain. You know, call out the answers. Yes, you're on the webinar. You don't need to shout out, but you can punch the answers into the chat box. You can just call out the answers yourself. You can raise your hands. But you must always remember, words are short-term, pictures are long-term. And, and I've seen this with my son who's studying at, at Varsity. When he does his study notes, they're all in colors and they all got pictures. And, and that is just enhances your learning experience yet today. So... When we have a look at the challenges of your business right now, how has business been in terms of COVID? I mean, we, we're in our second year of COVID. You know, what, what are some of the challenges you're expecting not right now? How do you feel about the future of the business? How confident are you of, of the growth of the sustainability of your, of your business? And, and what impact? has COVID had on your business? So I'm going to launch a, another poll. There's, there's only two polls. So this is the second one. So you don't have to worry too much. I'm not going to poll you guys to death. But what is your main challenge right now? Is, is, it, thing, is it cash flow to, to pay expenses? Is it getting new business? Is it retaining your existing clients? Is it motivating staff? Is, is it collecting your, your debts? How do you feel about the future of your business? Are you very negative? Are you somewhat negative? Are, are you sort of neutral? You're sitting on the fence. Are you somewhat positive? Are you very, very positive? And, and it's always great to see this because we always get guys that are very, very positive. We always guys, some guys are saying somewhat negative, somewhat positive. But I do find a lot of people, if I compare to this time last year, when I, when I ran these similar polls, a lot of people are moving towards the positive side of their business. And, and that is really, really great. COVID has impacted a lot of people. So if, if I just have a look at, at the numbers that's, that's coming in here, currently 40% of you say that COVID has negatively impacted your business. You know, the rest of you, the other 60% say there has been a, a positive impact. You guys have managed to push through. You have managed to grow. You have managed to change. So, so really, really well done on that. So I'm, I'm going to end the poll now. So thank you for, for taking part in that poll. So the question comes down to is, if we think about your business, is your business driving you or are you driving your business? Are you able, if you're a business owner, a leader, are you able to go away for three weeks without cell phone signal, internet signal and come back 
to a business that's growing? And, and this is a great question because majority of business businesses say, no, they can't. I mean, when I go and leave, I've got to work myself to death the week before I go to leave so I can take a week's leave. And when I come back from leave, I'm there for two days and it feels like I shouldn't have taken leave because it's just been absolutely crazy. And our, our definition of a successful business is a commercial profitable enterprise that works without you. And I think this is extremely, extremely important is, is if you are a leader in a business, how do you leverage your time, leverage your people so that you can move your business forward so you don't have to be doing all the work? So we must remember that business in business, your time is, is the most valuable asset. Once it's gone, it's gone. Business does not mean busyness. I, I see a lot of, of new business owners coming out. They're busy. They're working 16, 17 hours a day. And, and, and they're actually um, proud of it. And, and the reality is, is business is not about busyness. It's how you spend your time, where you spend your time, on your business is so so key important and it is for for us we always say to to my clients you need to be spending four hours a week working on your business that's doing sales that's doing marketing that's putting strategies together for your business but so often we're so busy doing the work in the business that we actually do not make the time. And, and I want to stress the word make the time because a lot of people say, oh, we didn't find the time or we didn't have the time. No, that's when we're operating below the point of power and the slide I showed you earlier on. It's about making the time because if you do not make the time to do what you learn yet today, then that's going to be a problem for you. So really in the way you invest your time is extremely extremely important so my purpose here today is to teach you to teach you educate you train you so that when this webinar is over you are able to go away and do it by yourself i'm not yet to do it for you you know you give a person a fish you feed them for a day but if you teach a person to fish you feed them for a lifetime and, and that that is our motto yeah so before we, so when we start off, everything that we do needs to be set in our minds. We need to set our, what we call our RAS. And this all comes down to goals. And goals is the compass of your brain. So in your business, you have business goals. When you're doing marketing, you have to have marketing goals. How many leads am I generating a week? How many posts am I posting a week? How many emails am I sending out a week or a month? How many blogs am I loading onto my website every week or every month? These are goals. So every aspect of your business needs to have goals. You need to have sales goals. You need to have finance goals. You need to have vision dream goals. And it's so important because goals set your direction and focus. They create movement and momentum for you to move forward. And sometimes you have to become a different person. Because you cannot always stay where you are. And it's always about setting that future. And when you set that future, you've always got to think about the end in mind. So you don't say to yourself, well, I'm going on holiday tomorrow. And you climb in the car and you drive. You know tomorrow we're going to drive down to Cape Town. And therefore, you know the end in mind. Then from there, you're going to choose the route. You're going to decide where you're going to be stopping for petrol. You're going to be deciding where you're going to stop to have breakfast or lunch. That is a goal. That is a goal because your goal is going to Cape Town. But my plan is how am I going to get there? And that is extremely, extremely important. And goals need to be smart. And, and the corporate acts guys who have gone into business and, and working for themselves i think they they hate this slide because corporate really sticks this down your throat but it is so important smart goals they need to be specific they need to be measurable they need to be attainable they need to be results driven and you need to be a time frame you need to know when i'm going to cape Town. i know i want to be in cape Town by four o'clock tomorrow afternoon that's the end result that is a result. I want to be in Cape Town time, four o'clock. 
you know, can I get there? It is attainable. Can I measure it? Yes, I can, because I can see how I am going along as I'm driving, and I need to be specific about where I'm stopping along the way. And it's the same thing with your business, is if you look at it, that top there, 12 months, three years, five years, where is your business going to be? Where's your sales? Where's your marketing going to be? What are the leads you want to be generating? And then you're going to create a road map working your way back and and we always break them down into 90 day segments right down to what do you need to do every day every week every month what goal do you want to achieve in 90 days in 120 days in 180 days to achieve your 12 month goal and whether you're doing marketing whether you're doing sales or whether whatever it is whether you're got a financial goal everything needs to be planned according to this so the key to success and we spoke about time earlier on is is how do you do that and and there are four areas it's called leverage people systems technology sales and marketing leverage leverage is what can you do to buy back your time what can you do less of but at the same time achieve more of and that might mean you, know, you might need to employ people or, or contract people to do certain aspects within your business for you. It might mean that you need to implement a system so that it frees up your time and that you don't have to manually do it. Technology these days, cell phones, iPads, are just absolutely amazing. Accounting systems, accounting processes are all there to help us improve our time and then sales and marketing every business needs to sales to do sales and marketing and and that's it i do sales and marketing you got to sell it's all good that that i coach clients or, or you offer a service and we get great results but at the end of the day sales and marketing is the key and is continuously has to happen within the, in your business so your accountant will tell you and your financial person will tell you that marketing is an expense you know we spend a lot of money we take all this money we spend it on facebook we spend it on google ads we pay people to do marketing for us but we're not getting any return from that and that is what we're going to be talking about today you know marketing needs to become an investment and this is where you're going to measure what it is your marketing is doing so you get marketing and you get lead generation and, and i find the two need to come hand in hand because when you do marketing you need to measure it and say well if i am paying four five or six thousand rand a month for marketing how many new customers am i getting from that marketing and how much are they spending with me because suddenly when you do those numbers you can see what marketing strategies are working and what marketing strategies you need to spend money on so often i've been with businesses where they, they said oh peter you know we spent i mean we spent three hundred thousand rand last year on marketing we never got one order but why is that? You spent the marketing in the wrong place. You, maybe your marketing strategy was wrong. Your process within your marketing is, is wrong. And, and this is so important to understand where, where that marketing is going. And that's why we've got to test and measure everything. You've got to test how many leads are you getting a week from what marketing channel? And you've got to measure it. Well, how many of those leads went into convert for conversion? How many of those leads became customers? And the most other important thing is consistency. Consistency is key. If you are not doing your marketing consistently all the time, it's not going to work for you. And I see people will come in and they will do marketing for three, four weeks, and then they'll tell you it doesn't work. But they're not building the consistency in it because you get two types of marketing. You get what we call farming and you get what we call hunting. Farming, if you think about farming, you prepare the soil, you, you plow the fields, you plant the seeds, you start to water the fields. The, the, let's call it the milli start to grow. They take time to grow and then you harvest. And that is farming. And that is your long-term posting, Facebook, um, social media. 
Then you got what we call hunting. And this is where you're actually going out, you're identifying your ideal client and you're connecting with that ideal client. You're actually going out there and looking for them rather than waiting for, for the customers to come to you. And you need to run the two and you need to be very clear on where you are running what marketing in your business. So what I want to do here is I, I want to start off with, with the five ways, five ways to grow your business. And, and what I want to explain it, it is great. Every business owner knows how many customers you have, what their revenue is, and how much profit you make. And, and so you should. But these, these are just results. These are end results. And um, this is not the front end. This is what happens at the end. So when we have a look at marketing, is the um, or, or the five ways is, is to prove how this works for you. We know how many customers you got, you know what your revenue is, you know what your profit is. Then we've got number of leads at the top. This is your marketing. This is what are you doing in your strategy session? And you can see the form on the right hand side. What are you doing in terms of Facebook, LinkedIn, email marketing, SEO, website, cold calling, whatever it is for you. What are you doing to generate leads in your business? And that's why we're going to jump into, into LinkedIn just now, because we're going to be showing you how the importance of LinkedIn and how it can generate leads for you. Then conversion rate is your sales process. Once somebody has put their hand up and has said, I want to talk to you about your products and service. I want to talk to you about your business. What happens next? Is it a case of they get a phone call, they get an email, they, you set up a meeting? That conversion rate is extremely important. That's going to result in you getting customers. Then once you've got the customers, you've got to look at how much are the customers buying from you? How often are they buying and how many times, how often are they buying? And how much are they spending with you? And what do you need to do to get customers to buy again? So if a customer is buying you from you twice a month, how do you get them to buy more often? And I'm going to get into these numbers a little bit more detail now. If average customer is spending a thousand rand with you, how do you get them to spend an extra hundred rand with you? And that's the end result going to give you your revenue. And then you're going to have your profit margin, which is then going to be a percentage and you can see what your profits are. So when we have a look at the way forward, and I just want to go through these numbers with you, <clears throat> you're running a lead uh, marketing strategy. Maybe it's LinkedIn messaging, Facebook, email marketing, cold calling. Maybe you just own a, a hardware store and, and 4,000 people walk into your door um, this month. So you had 4,000 leads. <coughs> Excuse me, 4,000 people walked into your store. Out of those 4,000 people, 25% of them actually bought something. And that was because you got in front of them, you, got, you spoke to them, you started building a relationship. So your conversion rate is very much about building a relationship with your client or the prospect, because people buy from people. No matter what everyone says, people still buy from people. So that is your relationship. What are you doing to build a relationship with those leads that have put their people that have put their hand up and said, I want to talk to you. So suddenly you've got a thousand customers and based on you measuring the numbers, because Peter's around and, and he's, he's on your case about it, you can see that the average client buys twice a month from you. And the average client spends a thousand rand with me every time they walk into my store. That's going to give me a revenue of two million rand a month. I know for a fact that I'm, I'm making 25% margin on, on my products. And that's giving me 500,000 rands worth of profit, which I'm then going to use to pay salaries, water and lights, rates and taxes, et cetera, et cetera. Now the question comes, how do we improve these numbers? How do we grow the business? Now, how do we get more customers? So I just want to show you an exercise that if, if we were to increase each of these areas just by 10%, what would the impact be on your business? 
So now, because you've attended this session today, you've got a better understanding of LinkedIn. So you're starting a, a, a LinkedIn process and you're starting to generate leads. So you generate an extra 400 leads this month. Now you've also improved your conversion rate. So you you've actually created a system to say when somebody puts up their hand and says, I want to talk to you, I want to buy from you. What do you do in terms of taking them through a process to get, become a customer? Maybe it's getting in front of them, having meetings with them, finding out or identifying exactly what their problem is that you can solve that will make them buy from you. So you've now just improved your conversion rate from 25% to 27.5. So it's 2.5%, but in actual fact, that's 10% of 25. So it's a very, very small number. And suddenly, in the month of November, you've generated an extra 210 customers. I mean, this is great stuff. So I've got an extra 210 customers. And because I've been building a relationship, <clears throat> I'm connecting with the customers after they bought from me, finding out if they're happy with the products, finding out if they're happy with the service. They come back. And they buy 2.2 times pretty cool now when i'm there and because i understand the client better and i'm talking to the client i understand his needs i understand his problems i understand his pain points i'm able to offer him more products and services to assist him and support him and suddenly he spends an extra 10 rand a month and a simple case is um, the best part was, was our, I ran this with a hardware store where we, we ran super glue. Every person that walked to the toll, we asked them, do you need super glue? Nobody needs super glue until they don't have it. And, and that's the biggest problem with it. Nobody goes to the hardware store to actually buy super glue. You, you buy it when it's there and you suddenly see you need it. Because they implemented their strategy, they, they, they never sold that much super glue in, in, in the 30 years that, that they were in business. And it increased their revenue. So suddenly, just by doing that, getting the client to come back more often, getting him to spend a little bit more with you, you generated 2.9 million rands with the revenue. That's 928,000 rands additional revenue by just tweaking each of these areas by 10%. Now you're more mindful of your costs. You're, you're, you're talking to your suppliers. You, you're getting better pricing. Um, maybe you've increased your prices slightly. Um, in, price increase is one of the biggest mind issues or the mind challenges that, that business owners and leaders have to overcome. Pricing has become such a challenge, especially over the last couple of years. And, and businesses have lose, lost sight in terms of sales versus profit. And now because you're measuring your profit, you actually know what's going on. So you've now increased your price just by 2.5% by to 27.5%. So my question to you is... If you were to increase your prices tomorrow by 2.5%, do you think anybody here would notice? How many of your customers would actually notice? And I've done this exercise with many of my customers and yeah, they, they're quite amazed that, that very few people actually objected when they increased their prices just by 2.5%. But it made such a massive impact on the bottom line because you can see, yeah, your profit suddenly went from 500,000 Rand to 805,000. It's a 305,000 Rand additional profit in your business. Now I need to ask you, what would you do with an additional 305,000 Rand in your business? So when you're applying this formula to your business, you suddenly discover if I can just increase each of these areas by 10%, I generated more clients. I've got clients buying more often. The clients are spending more and I'm making more profit. So I've not only made 305,000 rands with a pro, but I've increased my top line revenue by 46%. And I've increased my profit by 61%. 
Now, one of the things I find is, is most people I talk to right now will tell me they need more customers. Peter, we need more customers. Yes, we can focus on our existing customers, get them to buy more. But right now, we need more customers. We need to generate more leads and we need to improve our conversion. And for that reason, I, I've asked Jenny to, to join us here today to actually jump on and be part of, of this webinar. And, and Jenny is, is a LinkedIn lead generation specialist. And, and I don't want to say a LinkedIn marketing specialist because for, in my interpretation, it's, it's a different. Marketing is about nice pictures, likes, comments, and shares. Leads are about people who are putting their hand up and say, let me talk to you about your business and then you've got to convert them. And Jenny's going to talk us through the importance and the power of, of LinkedIn and, and what has happened um, to LinkedIn, especially since COVID in, in, in South Africa. I mean, LinkedIn has really powered up with the Poppy Act. It, it's really become probably your biggest database source right now for your business for your business so i'm gonna i'm gonna just introduce jenny and then i'm gonna hand over to jenny and then jenny is gonna gonna take over i see jenny is online so so thank you for that so yeah here's some information about about jenny jenny is the owner of a company called nixie rose um, media specializes in in social media marketing and, and lead generation jenny's got over 17 years in 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 financial services she spent 10 years in, in the automotive industry and in the last seven years, she's been doing sales and business development, especially around LinkedIn and lead generation. Uh, I just want to let somebody in here. So she started using LinkedIn in 2014 and she started using it to generate her own leads for her own business. And and subsequently, she's then moved over in, into, a, into a different business. And now she's offering this service to, to clients, to prospects, to, to generate more leads in the business. She's, she's passionate about customer service and compliance. One of her key, her key values are, are honesty, transparency, in, integrity. And, and her focus in life is, is assisting professionals, companies, and the individuals to expand their professional network, increase social media presence, and most importantly for me is, is generate leads via LinkedIn. Jenny is also a, a, um, a freelance artist. Um, in, in her spare time, it's pretty much a hobby. She loves painting. She loves drawing. Jenny's also um, recently had, had a child, so, so congratulations on that, Jenny. So Jenny, really great to, to have you Yeah, I'm just going to uh, stop sharing my screen and then I'm going to give you access if that's all right. Uh, Jenny, you're muted if you want to unmute yourself. Thank you, Peter. <laughs> okay, right. so I just need to... find you, I'm just going to uh, let give you access. Just give no problem. me a moment and... There we go. I, I have given you access. So Jenny, yeah, welcome and, and thank you. Really, thank you for, for being here. It's really great to have you. So yeah, over to you. Take it away for us. Thank you very much. Yes, my company was, like I, uh, I like to tell everyone, the name was after my two cats initially because I didn't have any children when I started it. And our little princess Riley has been born. Um, been considering a company name change, but that's okay. We'll, we'll start her own company for her. <laughs> Just going to share the screen if you can see it. Everything fine there that side, Peter? Uh, yes, Jenny. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, perfect. So uh, my first question to everyone is, is there anyone that's on this platform here that does not have a LinkedIn profile? Um, if you want to put it in the chat box, if you want to read the, the, the answers out there, Peter, if there is anyone there that does not have a LinkedIn profile. Any answers there? All right. No answers coming through. Yes. Uh, uh, Susie says she doesn't. Yeah. Okay. So Suzanne van der Marva. Um, is there a reason why, if I may ask, Suzanne? Mm. Just don't know enough right. about it. 
they didn't know about it. Okay, perfect. I thought that would be the answer. Um, perfect. The next question I want to ask is, those of you who do have a profile, when last did you log into it? Was it today? Was it yesterday? Was it last week? Last month? Was it longer than that? Um, and if you've logged in, is the information on your profile still accurate? Um, work history still there, contact details still accurate, profile picture still, you know, is it recent? How, when last? So, so here, we've got, uh, yeah, we've got uh, everyone basically saying daily. Nazli says yesterday. Um, Natasha said pretty much every day. Lungi, I post once a week. Uh, everything is up to date. Alfred is daily. So, so yeah, really great. Thank you for that, guys. Awesome. Perfect. Okay. So the next question is, what would you like your social media platform of choice to do for you? Whether that be Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Google Ads, Twitter. Um, is your main aim to you know, build brand awareness for your company? Is it to advertise your products or your services? Is it to expand your network or grow your audience? Is it for client satisfaction? So does it serve as a forum for uh, customer reviews or is it to generate leads? Or would you like all of that? Any feedback, all. Okay, all of that, everyone wants all of that, all of the above. Pretty consistent answers there, <laughs> all of the above. Perfect. So at the moment, is there anything that you think or know of that LinkedIn cannot do for you? Anyone say that? No answers there. Because I tell you something, LinkedIn can do all of that for you. So that's, it's, it's very powerful if you use it the right way. So just a couple of facts about LinkedIn. LinkedIn is responsible for 80% of business to business leads generated from social media. 92% of Fortune 500 companies and decision makers use LinkedIn. 90% um, of Facebook users use LinkedIn. So if you are on Facebook, then that's, sorry, commentary from my daughter there in the background. <laughs> Um, you definitely should be on the PAC platform and in South Africa alone, and this status actually needs to be updated, but the law checked at 6.8 million of the users on LinkedIn are in South Africa. A couple of famous people, sorry, the screen is a little bit blurred, but Elon's profile, you can see these got 500 plus connections, um, Barack Obama, you can connect directly to him, 500 plus connections. Uh, another one, Richard Branson, 19 million followers. So he's actually become a thought leader and an influencer. So you'll see he's tweaked his profile to not just build followers and not connections. Um, Tony Robbins, I'm sure most of you know Tony Robbins as well. He's on LinkedIn. Um, Patrice Mutsepe, South African businessman. And you can Google a couple of the names of high profile individuals, decision makers in big companies or small companies. And chances are you will find them on LinkedIn. Um, so the question to you is if they're on LinkedIn and they've all got a substantial number of followers and they're active regularly, why aren't you? Um, LinkedIn is the number one channel to distribute content. Um, and when I say active, you know, it, it's more than logging in, which I'm going to explain to you now. Business to business marketers who use various social media sites to distribute content, um, LinkedIn, 94% of the leads are generated from there. Twitter, 89%, Facebook, 77%. And then you've got YouTube and Google, which is 77 and 61% together. So LinkedIn is definitely the most popular one there at 94%. Um, what are the challenges that LinkedIn can help you with nowadays that we face? Technology and evolving times. So businesses constantly need to grow and evolve. People are working from home nowadays. People are operating their businesses, their emails, everything from their cell phone. Um, people want quick, easy answers. Um, they want direct contact. So you need to evolve. You need to join a platform that evolves at the same pace. 
time is a challenge, um, which we have addressed there. Obviously, a lot of people don't have time to go and drive to a specific place or to wait um, for an answer or an email, etc. Um, so, so LinkedIn can help you there with, with time saving. It helps you get through the gatekeepers. Now, if you're in sales or marketing um, and you know, you, I'm sure you've experienced a challenge when you try and reach the decision maker in the business or the person that you're targeting, most of the time you either get a landline number or if you're driving around, you walk in and you meet the receptionist, that's your gatekeeper. And the classic answer is, okay, let me take your number, they'll phone you back or here's the email address, send an email and that's where it does. So LinkedIn enables you to connect directly to the people, you bypass the gatekeeper. It's also with the implementation of the Poppy Act, um, I'm sure everyone is aware of this now, it helps you bypass Poppy, if I can say that. Um, or, or, or not not bypass it, rather stay in accordance with Poppy. It's, a, it's the safest way to do it. So the minute you connect with the person, it's permission to contact, it's permission to market. Um, LinkedIn actually keeps your connections as a database. They've got safeguards in terms of encryption um, and database security. So really it's the safest platform. And then as Peter rightfully mentioned, it's the largest available database to you at the moment at minimal cost, if not for free, if you use it correctly. Uh, just scrolling here. So LinkedIn is based on social selling and Facebook and any social media marketing actually. And what is social selling? So in a nutshell, social selling is the process of using tools like Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn to build relationships, create relationships, define your reputation, so create a professional presence for yourself, um, to gain visibility amongst your target market, to deliver value to your target market, and to establish credibility. All of this will, uh, you know, your social media platform of choice will do that to you. Now with LinkedIn, how it operates differently from your other social media platforms is it's, it's largely built on algorithms. Now, I know Facebook has something similar, but not as powerful as LinkedIn. So LinkedIn gives what they call you a social selling index score or an SSR score. What this score does, um, it, it rates you out of 100 based on your activity and how you've structured your profile. If you are curious, most of you do have a LinkedIn profile. So I'm going to put the link on the screen here where you can actually see, um, and I'll just copy this into the chat box as well, Ooh, sorry, for you, what your SSR score is. So I'll just put this in the chat box and then feel free to, to actually share that score with us. Then that's going to give us a good indication for if you are on the platform and currently it's not working for you, we're now going to explore why. So uh, there is the link in the chat box. And if you want to just share some of those scores when you're ready. So you just copy, you obviously just access that link. You're going to log in with your username and your pro, uh, um, your password, and it should take you to a screen where um, I'll show you in the next slide. I just want to make sure everyone's got the link and the QR code where you can then see it will give you 24 out of 158. And then pop your scores into the chat box. Oh, goodness. I see I've only shared it with Peter. Now I know why I'm not seeing any scores. Sorry about that, everyone. <laughs> There's the link. Is there anyone here that is over 80? There we go, 59% industry SSI, 78%, 67 out of 100, that's very good. Any other scores there? 62, also very good. So basically, um, 
what it is if uh, you have a certain score, it affects your visibility. So your score will look like this. You have at the top your industry SSI rank. So that's where you rank according to the information on your profile amongst people that are in your industry. Um, again, on the top right hand uh, score, that's amongst your network. Your current social selling index score, that's the one that's out of 100. On the right hand side, you can see what makes up the components of your score, which we'll um, explore now people in your industry and people in your network. So there's a, a, cup, a couple of scores coming through now. What is it made out of? That score is made out of four components. These four components each build 25% of your score. In other words, 25 points. So the first one is um, how you are establishing your professional brand. Now, establishing your professional brand is how you've structured your profile. Are you representing your company correctly on LinkedIn? And your employees that have listed themselves as employees of your company, are their profiles all in, all in alignment and accordance with, with your company page? Um, are they representing it correctly? The second one is, are you finding the right people? So according to your industry, are you reaching out to those correct people? Um, are you engaging with insights? The... Basically, engagement is the content that you're posting, and we're going to explore this more. And are you building relationships? So if you look at your score, you will see you've maybe got 10 out of 25 for establishing your professional brand, 13 for finding the right people, 7 for engaging with insights. Um, hopefully, your building relationship is high because that's largely what the platform is based on. And that will give you a good indication of if you need to work on your profile, why it's not working for you and where you need to start. One of these quadrants. Eventually, you will obviously adapt everything accordingly, but you need a starting point. So just a couple of tips from my side. Um, on it's, oh, Firstly, let me explain how it works. You can have a thousand connections or 16,000 connections. Um, and you might have a very low SSR score. So let's say it's 10% or 15% or 30%. That means you can post every single day. You will only get 10% visibility. So 10% of your connections will actually see that post. And that's because the algorithm or the platform penalizes you based on your score. You could have a higher score. Let's say you're hovering around the middle. Um, you might then only have 75% visibility. In other words, only 75% of your thousand connections will see your posts. You might have a very high SSR score. So the high score, I would say, is from 60% and up. Um, once you hit 75%, out of 100 or more, you actually then get 125% visibility. So LinkedIn rewards you by then showing your posts to your full network all of the time, constantly on time, as well as giving you an additional 25%. So as you tweak certain things and you get badges, etc., on LinkedIn, they reward you accordingly. One of the rewards for having a high score is this vis visibility. So you actually want to, to increase the score as quickly as possible. Now, how do you start? Let's say, for instance, you need to establish your professional brand. The first thing that you do is your profile optimization, what I like to call it, and that is how you've structured your profile. Now, this, this is quite an in-depth process, and there's a lot of points. I'm going to share the, the top ones for you that you can just go through quickly. It's really not rocket science. Um, it's obviously first impressions last. So just like when you meet someone in person, you want to be presentable, you want your profile to do the same for you. So the first thing that you're going to look at is your profile and your background images. So you should have a clear profile picture where they can see your face. You don't have sunglasses on. There's minimal background noise. Um, you, you seem approachable and friendly. So you've got a smile, whether that's smiling with your eyes or smiling with your actual mouth. It is a professional platform. So yes, pictures of your family are great. Pictures of you and your dog are fantastic. Everyone likes those. 
but generally that's not the, the persona you want to replicate unless that's the industry you're in. Um, so, so keep it only yourself in the picture. Then your background banner. Now, why do you do that? Because some people are visual. And remember, some people, the first impression happens within seven seconds. So they want to see immediately what you represent. Your background banner can be your logo. That is this at the back there. It can be um, a picture of your building. And generally, you want to put in your keywords here for SEO, which is search engine optimization. So when people are typing all of these in to a search engine like Google, it picks up your LinkedIn profile and they can see immediately what you represent. So that's the first thing there. Just a couple of tips for your profile picture. Pick a photo that actually does look like you because ultimately at the end of the day, yes, you're going to reach out to these people on an electronic platform, but hopefully the relationship then builds up to where you're going to meet them in person. Um, obviously, you don't want too many filters on your image so that when you meet them, they actually do recognize you. Use a high resolution image so it's clear and make sure that your face takes up at least 60% of the frame. Do be the only person in the picture. If possible, get someone else to take the picture for you. Do choose the right expression. So obviously not too hard, not too serious, just a, a general warm, genuine smile works a lot. Avoid any distracting backgrounds, wear what you generally wear to work. So if you work from home most of the time, your typical Zoom outfit will work. Um, take the photo in soft natural light and do use your filters wisely. So basic, basic principles. The next thing that you need to focus on is your about section or your summary. So your LinkedIn summary basically acts as a mini biography. It's who you are. You can share who you are in an engaging way. You can be humorous if you want. Um, it's the most important part of your LinkedIn profile because it's, again, the first impression you give viewers. So you want to tell people who you are. Some people are picture people. They're going to look at your profile images and your background banner. Some people are word people. They're going to then read your about section. What should you, you keep in there? Basically, sorry about that. Just a summary of who you are what your vision is for your company and what your mission is on LinkedIn. You want to connect with people for X reason. Um, share a little quote that, that represents you. Do include your contact details. Even though you do have a contact field, you want that again. All of your keywords that you've put in your banner, you're going to want to put in your about section as well. Again, that's for SEO. So when someone populates that into Google, your LinkedIn profile is then going to show up. The next one is your featured section. So a featured section is basically like a little portfolio or a photo album. You can upload images of your products. You can upload images of you and your clients, your testimonials. You can highlight any blogs, any articles that you've appeared in, um, projects that you're working on, anything like that. Your featured section will look like this on your profile and you can update this regularly. So one of the things that I like to tell people is, what is all of this that I'm showing you doing? What is the importance? Well, if you think of a lava lamp, the lava lamp was a, or is a lamp that generally came from the 70s where you switch it on and it's got all this, these psychedelic colors and it moves and it looks fantastic. But when you switch it off, it doesn't look so great. So your profile is like a lava lamp. You can buy one and not plug it in but no one's going to look at it. The minute you switch it on, it gains attention. There's movement and your profile does the same thing. So as the more information you populate onto your profile, the more pictures, the more images, the more words, um, the more attention basically you're going to get. Also, the higher your SSI score. There are ways of actually populating all this information on and tweaking the visibility of it so you don't lose, lose points on your score. But why do you regularly update your featured section? Well, just like technology, um, one laptop is good this year. The next, lap, uh, next year, you're going to have to upgrade it or two years because a newer, better one has come along. Eventually, if you're not constantly updating your profile, it does become dormant. So your featured section is important. And then lastly, just your recommendations. So like I said, there's, a, there's really a lot of points on your profile. These, these are the top 
five ones that I could think of quickly. The importance of getting recommendations on LinkedIn, they basically work as a testimonial. The more recommendations you've got, the better people know who you are. Also, your profile then starts showing up under the you know, recommended connections. So if you have searched for an, a business coach or training and development or whatever your, your, your client is or you, you're looking for, they show up suggested profiles or top profiles, just like Google searches. The more recommendations you've got, it establishes your credibility. So they're going to put you right there at the top. They can significantly boost your, your profile. Then um, accomplishments, a lot of people don't include this on your um, profile and you really should. Again, it gives you certain points. So accomplishments, doesn't matter how small you think they are, put them on there. It's also a place you've worked hard for all of this, show it off. So whether you've got small certificates, whether you've got um, high test scores, you can put that on there. And then your volunteer experience. Now, everyone likes a humanitarian or a philanthropist or someone who helps animals. Please do show that because also, you know, it's, um, it's a way of relating to you. Okay, they also are a member of this organization. They also do this. And then it shows you human. Again, you're approachable. So put all your volunteer experience, but please do be true and, and accurate. Don't just put a whole lot of willy-nilly stuff there because it could be quite embarrassing if someone does contact you <laughs> for something because they see you involved and you actually don't know anything about it. The next point of um, your profile is actually finding the right people. So you don't just connect to anyone willy nilly. You need to actually target correctly. So you're going to step outside of your comfort zone. LinkedIn is a global platform, which means you can connect to millions of people that you don't know. It's not like Facebook, where generally you want to connect to the people you know personally. Here, you are going to want to connect to people that you don't know personally and actually network and engage with people that are in your industry. The second thing is connect with purpose. Again, don't just hit the connect button for any reason. Actually connect with a purpose. If you are targeting people within a specific company and you want to connect to their employees, do that and include that in a messaging um, script, which, which I'll explain to you now when you send them that connection request. So they also know why you want to connect with them. I mean, if you get a phone call from someone and they just say hello and they say nothing else, you, generally the conversation is not going to go much further than that. Um, so, so connect with a purpose. Use your filters wisely in terms of targeting. Now, filters, it's not like Instagram filters where you're honing your photograph. Filters is actually where you can use the top section of the profile and say okay you want to connect to people in the western cape in Gauteng, in italy in um, industrial automation or electrical or renewable and energy and environmental industries um, with the title ceo sales manager and you want to connect only to people who've attended you know university of, of johannesburg for example and it will filter and hone down over 700 million people and allow you to connect to only those people. So do, do make use of the filters. A lot of the time, the people don't. Um, then introduce yourself and state why. Like I say, you, initially, you're going to set up a what, what, what I call a scripting message system, which is a set of messages that you're going to send the person. The first one is going to be your introduction message. So when you hit connect, you will see LinkedIn allows you to adapt the message or add a little personal note. Do that. Say, good day so-and-so or good day X or whoever it is. I would like to connect with business owners in the Western Cape. I am wanting to connect with members of SASL, for example. So they know why you're reaching out. The next one is you're going to thank them and... Um, I'll, I'll explore the scripting messages now. And then lastly, use your associations wisely. So be careful of name dropping because what you will see on LinkedIn is you start developing mutual connections. Eventually, you can have 2,000 mutual connections with one person 
but you don't actually know them pers uh, personally. Now, a lot of the times people will try and hijack a network by means of association by saying, oh, okay, I see you know so-and-so, I also know so-and-so, um, let's get together. Now, that's normally a good introduction. On LinkedIn, you need to uh, be a little bit careful of that because like I say, you can have 2000 mutual connections, not know any of them or the person you're connecting to. Um, so, so don't name drop, just use that, be very careful with that. The third point is building relationships. They're going to give you a score for how you build relationships. Now, this is where your messaging comes into play. Firstly, LinkedIn is not a dating site, please. That is the cardinal rule of this. The people do not appreciate it. The minute you start flirting and sending inappropriate content on LinkedIn, you're going to land up in what they call Facebook jail. Your account will be suspended. You will be reported. They are very um, serious with this. The next thing is um, do not go in for the sales straight away. No one likes to be spammed. So don't just connect to the person and say, okay, I'm selling this. They're going to run away. They're not going to want to build the relationship. There's no rapport that's being created there. There's no trust that's being built. Um, you're not going to get very far. Do ask them about them. So you've connected to them because they're a member of Cecil. Okay, I see you are HR practitioner. Can you tell me a little bit about this? Or ask them, has your profile been updated? Are you still there? Ask them about themselves, make it about them, because people do like to know that you are actually interested in them. And then give or add something of value to them, whether that is 10 business points, whether that is a voucher, whether that is an invitation to, to an event, um, you know, give or add something of value. And then obviously you can, you can then carry the conversation through towards opening up a sale. Always thank them for connecting to you. It's, it, you know, gratitude goes a long way. And then the fourth part of your score is do you engage with insight? So what is engagement? It's how you immerse, how you involve them and how you actually interact with them. So again, your scripting messages, like I say, that is going to be your, your first message will be hi, so-and-so. Um, this is why I want to connect. Your next one will be thanks for connecting. The third one will be your... Um, value that you're giving them or your invitation etc that is then going to LinkedIn picks up these messages and it detects the responses as well and that adds to your score so back to activity what is activity what is engagement LinkedIn allows you to wish people happy birthday congratulations on anniversaries obviously you can like comment and share on posts that's the quickest way to build up your engagement and your activity on LinkedIn but then there's other little things that LinkedIn allows you to do. So if you download the app on your phone, you can send voice notes, much like WhatsApp. Um, and people, you know, again, want to get to the point very quickly. They want to know that you are a human, not a bot that's running the account because they will penalize you for that as well. So a voice note goes a long way. Do attend webinars or hold a webinar yourself. That is engagement and, and activity direct messaging again, that's engagement and activity. And then the importance of content, do you create your own content? Do you just share other person's content? Do you thank people for responding? Do you reply to comments that you receive? Articles, blog posts, all of that is, is engagement. And when you, you know that there's a lot of detail on what to post, if you're gonna post videos, how long it should be, um, what colors to use, you can do a little bit of research about it. You can reach out to me. I'd be more than willing to give you a couple of tips there. But all of that plays a part in engagement. And the minute all of this starts picking up, that part of your score will also pick up. Then create your own content. Again, sorry, articles, blogs, images. Join your groups. So you will see LinkedIn has got a whole lot of groups. Now, what I must give Facebook kudos for is um, their groups do seem to participate really well. So what you want to do on LinkedIn, you can join groups with like SA Business Network or professionals in, in your industry and you can network and share ideas and also put your posts in these groups. If you want to create a personal group where there's actual interaction, the good thing
thing to do is to connect with them on LinkedIn, build that relationship, redirect them to your, your group on Facebook, and then continue it there. Alternatively, there's very large groups on LinkedIn. Um, you can then join them as well. And then when you do post, invite answers. So actually ask questions, create voting polls. Um, so you are encouraging that engagement from your audience. Just want to see, make your profile work for you. So use it with the intended purpose. If you are using your profile to look for jobs, you're going to tweak the information for job hunting. If you're using it to boost your electrical business, obviously the content that you put out there is going to be related to electrical industry, basically. Make sure it's up to date. Accuracy is very important. And do be transparent. And remember, LinkedIn is a give and receive thing. So you're going to ask for recommendations. You're going to ask people to like and comment your posts. Um, you're going to want to give that out as well. It does pick that up and it all forms part of your score. That's just a, a couple of tips. I'm not sure if it helps anyone. Um, if you need any guidance or assistance, these are my contact details here. I'd be more than willing to give you an assessment of your business and your profile and tell you where you're going wrong, have a look at your score and then give you tips on what to do. Um, I'm not sure if that QR code is, is very clear, but that's my email address and my cell phone number. More than welcome to, to contact me. And that's it from me, Peter. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you. Really great, man. If you can uh, give me access back, uh, would be greatly appreciated. Okay, doing that now. There we go. So, yeah, I mean, it's really great seeing all this learning. I mean, it, it's amazing how powerful it is and, and also a little bit how overwhelming it is, can be. And, and that's why you have someone like Jenny who, who helps you set this up or, or in some cases even, even do it with you. So before we, before we jump off, because we were virtually at the end of our session today, is I want to I want to come back to the five ways and, and we've spoken about leads now and we've spoken about LinkedIn and if you think about as I said earlier on is there are two areas that if you want more customers you need to focus on and that is number of leads and conversion rate extremely extremely important number of leads and conversion rate what is it that you need to do now. When you finish off this webinar, what is it that you need to do now to start generating leads and converting? Because the LinkedIn is generating the leads for you. But if you think about it, once you've connected with a person, there's a, there's a conversion process there as well before they actually put up their hand and say, yes, I want to talk to you. And then once they do put up their hand and say, yes, I want to talk to you, that is the next step that you need to be very, very clear on is to say, what do I need to do in my conversion process that somebody says, yes, I would love to talk to you about your business or your products and services. What is the next step? And that is extremely, extremely important right now. So I, I want to share this with you and, and, you know, dreams can and do come true you need to think like an entrepreneur you know what is your plan now that you've got this linkedin training and we've gone through the five ways what is your plan for your future of your business you know if you don't change the way you do things now what do you think is going to happen nothing's going to happen it's going to stay the same and that's the problem. You'll keep getting what you've always got. So, so you need to build that dream. You need to hold on to that dream and you need to start working towards it. And you need to start changing. The biggest thing that's going to stop you from doing this right now is fear. And that is, what if it works? I mean, I've had people, what if it works? What if it doesn't work? Well, what if it takes too much time? What I've still got to learn, I don't know enough. And this is fear. And, and fear, I'd say, is a false expectation that appears real. Fear gives us an excuse not to do what's needed to be done to make this work for you today. Warren Buffett says it's not necessary to do extraordinary things to get extraordinary results. 
Jim Rowan says, never wish your life was easier, easier. Wish you were better. Work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Brad Sugar says, where you will be in five years will depend on the books you read, the people you associate with, and, and the actions you take. So my, my question is, where are you going to be in 12 months time? Where's your marketing going to be in 12 months time? Where's your sales? Where's your turnover? Where's your profit? Where's your business going to be in 12 months time? Because I can guarantee you, whichever it is, you will, you will arrive. The question is where? Which one do you want to be? The person on the left or the person on the right? And by working with a business coach like myself, you'll learn how to generate more cash flow, more profits, get your team working, free up your time, but generate leads, get more customers. So one of the things I want you to write to, to, to think about right now is what is your biggest takeaway from today's session? And because, and when we're almost at the end, so don't jump off. And because you've invested the time today, I, I want to give you something. I want to give you a complimentary coaching session. That is where you and I will sit down and we will have a discussion about your business if you want to see whether you want to take it to the next level. So this is where you've got to now get into action. Everything you've learned here today, you've got to now start implementing. You've got to put a plan together. You've got to set your goals and you've got to start taking action. And the action today could be book a complimentary hour and a half session with me today for 3,600. And, and, and it's purely because you've spent the time, you are here today, and I want you to really get the value that you've got from this webinar today. It's not something that you want to just take and put in the drawer and leave it there. It's something that you need to action it that we can talk about and see what are the next steps for you in terms of getting your business to where you want to go. So one thing that's important is your feedback is extremely, extremely important to me. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to launch a, a code. You can use the QR code. Is I've got a formula I would really encourage you all to fill in. It's just to give me some feedback about what is your biggest learning? How was your experience today in, in this webinar? And what, what was your biggest takeaway? So I, I'm going to copy the link. You can, you can just use your phone on the QR code if you want. I'm also going to put the link in, in, in the chat box. So there we go. Link, link is in the chat box. So go in there, fill out the questionnaire, short questionnaire about how was your experience? Because with your feedback, we, how do we make these webinars more exciting, more educational for you? What was your biggest learning? Put that in there. I'd love to hear from you. What was your biggest learning going on in there? And secondly, would you like to take this opportunity of getting that free coaching session for one and a half hours talking to me? So, so jump on there now and uh, have a look. Punch in the form. I'm going to be on there for a little bit longer. So really great to, to have everyone here. And uh, if you would like, feel free to, to share, comment. If you'd like to chat to me, I, I am going to be on for the next five minutes. So, But thank you very much for attending. It was really great. Jenny, really thank you for that. You know, I've watched your presentations probably the third time, but every single time I, I learned something that, that I, I didn't see before. So... Really, thank you for that. Thank you, Peter. And thanks for having me today. And thanks for everyone listening. Yes, my pleasure. And, and yeah, anyone who wants to connect with Jenny, please, uh, please do. I mean, jump in and you know, business is fun. Let's make it happen. We just need to learn how to do it. You need to learn how to do it consistently. And that is what is, what is so important right here now. 
Guys, I've also um, recorded this session. So if you fill in the form, I, I will send you the, the recording as well. If you would like to get the recording, uh, also you can type in the chat box. I see Brian has already said you'd, you'd like to get the recording from me. So it is recording. I'll probably, it'll probably go out on, on Friday when, once uh, it's been edited and just reviewed. So Natasha says she would like the, the recording. Excellent. Thank you, Natasha. So other than that, Wednesday, Wednesday, guys, so go out, have really, just have a great week. And yeah, thanks for your comments. Um, Garansi would like the, um, Kirk would like the recording. You know, Jennifer says, thank you. We both said a second, Jennifer. And yeah, Yuan from Remington says you'd like to connect with Jenny. Yeah, please do so. So guys, that brings us to the end of today's session. So um, yeah, thank you very much. And just go out there, make it happen. It's your business. You're in charge of sales. You're in charge of marketing. Um, let's just do it. Veronica says she would like the, the recording. Excellent. All right, Johan, I will send you uh, Jenny's contact details. So uh, Howard says you would like the recording as well. Thank you. All right, so that brings us to the end of the session. Everyone, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, just have... Have a great week.